here we are. So I have this package with nothing in my orders. I'm like, oh my gosh, did I forget something? Did I, what did I do? Done something wrong. So I opened it up. And the first thing that I come to is a hairnet. Now, some of you might be super thrilled to get a hairnet. I'm like, okay, okay, I got, cool, I got a hairnet. I'm thinking, yeah, netting, score. But then I see the letter. And I see this little package. So I'm gonna read you guys this letter. You guys can read along with me. Greetings, Jen. I apologize for not getting this to you sooner. Xmas and all. You already know my army background. Yes, I do. Who ah? Small recap. 85% disabled. I do this to keep myself busy. I'm not trying to make a living at it, but I do like it when people's eyes light up when they see something they haven't seen before. I call myself RXX Lures. I learned cabinet making from my dad when I was very young, then got into painting cars a lot, which is super cool. Um, I'll interject that. That's really cool. A lot of, you know, a lot of guys and gals that have done automotive type stuff and paints and customs get into lures because it's all about the paints and the airbrush. So good on you. Custom motorcycles. Went to college for it. Custom motorcycles and the works. After I got hurt in Iraq, I've been looking to keep myself busy. Seen one of your videos, the rest is history. I've got a pretty good grip on art and woodworking. I just want to see you paint a subscriber handmade Western Cedar lipless lure. I'm not trying to advertise. I don't have the tools to ramp up. I see the messages you leave yourself on your spray bench and it gives me, it gives me hope. <laughs> um, makes me get off my butt and do better. Anyway, go for it. It's yours to do with what you want, okay? It's weighted front heavy to sink, nose first, has a nice tail wobble, rattle, no rattle, okay? It's been based in white testers Aztec opaque white, fraternally, Sergeant Michael Robertson. Wow, Michael. Um, now, on to this. P.S. I've included a hairnet. It's what I use for scales. I knew there was a trick to that. Um, food manufacturer here in town, and they're an easy, that's awesome, they're easy to get. Just something different. I, first of all, I'm floored, and I'm really excited to show off this bait. The dings never stop, so we're just going to work through that. I pretty much stay connected whenever I can. But this is the handmade beautiful beautiful lipless that he sent and he has done a phenomenal job carving it i mean that's just smoking hot sergeant thank you so much for this i hope that i do some justice to it and now we got to figure out what kind of cool pattern we're going to put on it i think i know what i want to do and some folks are probably going to say it's been done to death, but, but this is not going to be an average pattern that people have done to death. Now, when most people think of that saltwater clownfish or clowns in general, no, no, not that one, not that one. They think of this little guy. We're not going to do that. We're going to do what's called a Picasso percula clown. This is pretty much going to be just for the pattern that I want to cut. I'm going to hand cut stencils today. You guys always ask to see me do that. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to cut out this little guy. And you guys are going to play along in the top right hand corner like normal. So I'm actually really excited. This is your Picasso Percula Clown. Yes, very similar to Nemo, but uh, a bit fancier. Most of these are captive bred. I don't really know the uh, genetic makeup or nomenclature. 
but I know that they are very expensive in the way of clownfish. As far as, so I used to have a saltwater tank. I had a beautiful saltwater tank when I lived back in Maryland and there was no sense moving it. So the fish went to good homes and I ended up selling the tank. Anyways, I digress. This is the Picasso Percula. I'm just gonna clip that there so we can all play along. There's some things that I try that's just like, yeesh. And then there's other things that I try that's really, really good. So it's luck of the draw sometimes. So I'm going to be using this. Um, you could do something like, um, you know, those hard cardboard things that come in the mail, like Kohl's and JCPenney send out those little hard card mailers. And so there's a lot of different things. You really just want something that's going to be thick enough that you can kind of bend it and move it, but it's not going to get saturated when you put airbrush spray against it, once you put paint against it. So we're going to snip that. And pretty much all I'm going to do is I'm going to look at how long the bait is, and this is pretty good. And then I'm going to just be, I'm going to eyeball this. I'm just going to be mindful of proportions on here. So when you look at this, and you guys are kind of looking at what I'm doing there, if you guys can see, then that gives you a, a better idea of where you want to put stuff on this bait. So the first thing I want to do is grab my X-Acto knife and make a couple just random cuts that will be similar to what's going on. Just This is probably going to be the most complicated. You need a little bit of technical ability as far as pressure spraying because that's the name of the game today we're going to be doing. And then just looking at the top of this, come down do that and just basically making and I don't want to make these too close together because I want to be able to spray each one kind of individually so I'm not going to be splitting this card anymore I'm going to be using kind of almost like Russ Allen does his wheels where you can just kind of move this around which is one of the reasons that I like this card this card seems to be like perfect for crankbait size stuff so we'll have a back spray area, a couple of areas here, can even come in and do a little something like that. And again, does not have to be exact or perfect, but you guys kind of get the general idea of what I'm doing here. Now the next thing I want to do is just to kind of get a general idea of where everything is going to go together on this pattern. So keeping an eye on what's happening back there, I'm just going to take what's left of this pencil and just kind of eye up where I want everything to come together. And in a very light manner, I'm going to just kind of sketch that onto this. And this is going to disappear because we are very fortunate that we're working with orange and black on this bait. So this is something that you can absolutely do. Just take your pencil and kind of make yourself a, an impression on here of where you want this to go. Fairly easy and that way you can kind of continue around the side so it's not going to look all weird when you're transitioning from one side to the other side. Right? Now our outline is loosely done and we're ready to put on some orange paint. This is going to be a combination of oranges. I've got some, this is a really good representation, but it's not just this color. There's a little bit of darkness to it as well. So we're going to blend a few things together here. I've got pretty good helping of 
sunburst fluorescent and to that I'm going to add some basic transparent orange just to darken it up and you guys can see the difference in that at least I hope you can but there is there's a difference in that go ahead and add that together got it all mixed up today we are going to be spraying around 15 so set your pressures to 15 and we're going to do this top piece we're going to do this section of the front first and remember it does not have to be perfect because you're going to cover this on the edges with black we're going to do it we're going to do that fade We're going to hit all sides, so make sure we're wiping this down. You guys hear that? Got that little hiss again. I'm going to have to just take some time, like some legit time. See, it's still spraying. That's never good. Sorry about that, you guys. We are back. Just needed to get a good clean here on the trigger. Now, and the other thing that I did off camera that we're going to do in between every single section of this that we spray is we're going to be heat setting. And the reason we have to do that is so that we don't smear the paint. That would be bad. And with this, I can just kind of eyeball this in along the top. Sort of like coloring in the lines. Once you get used to pressure control and you know you're not going to blast paint all over the place, I could probably do that with the entire thing, but I want to show you guys stenciling because you always ask. It's one of the most frequent asked questions is how I stencil. And then we're going to come, come to the other side and finish this section. We're doing one section at a time. Now we're going to heat set. I'll be right back. Heat set is in and we're going to do that for the for the entire thing so I'm not going to tell you guys now that you know what I'm up to here. I'm not going to necessarily tell you. I'm just going to cut to the next scene and just know that I am heat setting in between every single section. For the bottom here, just grab this little bit, make sure we wipe that down as we go, and then come and do the same thing. Now on the belly you want to pay particular attention not to, to pull the paint down the sides of the lure. Even though you're going to work around the edges, you still don't want to mess it up. Now we're just going to come back around the edges here. Always just like you're normally using stencils, you want to make sure that you hit the edge of your stencil at an angle and not directly hit your paint because that is what's going to make this kind of feather into the pattern the way it's supposed to. And then just finish that off. You can always come back and touch up 
any loose spot, just like that. And just continue on around the side. And just keep moving around the bait. If you do run into problems where you're starting to stick, you can always flick it and it usually comes right back out. So it just, again, it just needs to be cleaned. This we know. Sure, I'll have like a million people going, hey, clean your airbrush, Jen. And then just finish this up here. Make it real pretty. Don't need much pressure at all. Now that we've got our basics in, all the colors are in, the detailing is in, pretty much finished with black, except for this uh, pectoral fin, I am going to use just a little bit of sunset red and darken up some around the tail and maybe around the nose. Not too dark, but just to kind of accent this a little bit. And then we can get away with doing the same thing, lowering the pressure and bringing this in the middle. Being real careful to color in between the lines. And maybe do just a little bit in the center here. lay that in, kind of get that accent going on, and bring it down. And there we have it. Now that we're finished with all these pieces, I can go ahead and cut this out. Why would I do that, you say? Well, the last thing that we have to do is put in this pectoral fin. So we're going to take this and I'm going to make the cut and make a little pectoral fin so that we can spray. That's the, the very last thing except for the eyes. Kind of like that. So let's see how we do. Now one thing that we did just like in this reference back here, up top, is I put this little triangular patch in. Now it's there, sort of, not quite as pronounced as this triangle is, but that is going to be my reference point for putting in this pectoral fin. So what I'll do, I have a little hole here, two holes, can you guys see that? I've got a tiny hole here and the pectoral fin here. I'm going to line this up with this edge. And it'll look just like that and then we'll spray white here. Need this to lay down just like that. There's 
a curvature in this build, in this uh, lure. And there we have it. There's our fin. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. And the reason that we're doing white is so that we can lay this down as a primer again. We just want to set that down, spray directly at it, and we have our primer. We have them on the exact same spot. We're going to come over with orange because you can see this pectoral fin is orange. So I got to pull this white out of the chamber, heat set it, put some orange in. Bring that pressure back down, make sure it's spraying well. It is. and set this back over the exact same area. Lift it up, hit this other side. Make sure you wipe the stencil clean, flip it. Line it up. and shoot it. Now that we have everything set, the last thing to do is to put this black around the edges. So you can see, and we'll run this just a little higher to get this top edge. Come back and do the same thing on the other side. We are coming down the home stretch. We've got to put eyes on this thing now and it's not a hundred percent perfect, but this thing is, is close enough to where I'm super happy with how the patterns turned out so far. Um, we've got the pectoral fins in, we've got the basics of how these Picasso Peculas are set up and designed, and they're beautiful fish. They're absolutely beautiful. For clowns, they're not just the boring two or three lines like the tomatoes or the browns or the maroons. Now the maroon clowns with yellow striping is also really pretty. But we just need to get some eyes in here. So now we're going to look at this bait head on. And I do have some lines or some little dots on here to kind of give me a, a rough idea of where I want these eyes to go. And I can do a couple of different things. Um, their eyes are pretty much like a goldish with black on the inside. And because there's no eye sockets on this beautiful western cedar, um, we can either put 3D eyes on the outside or I could put boring old two-dimensional paste-ons. If I'm going to paste something on, it might as well be a pretty eye. So we're going to go ahead and select some size fives here. Don't want to overpower it with big eyes. What big eyes do you have, Grandma? The better to see you with, my dear. And we want to get just a little drop I'm going to use a new bottle here. Just a little drop on this as we go. I'm going to do one side at a time. There's that. We don't want it to drip. So I'm going to set this down, lay it kind of on its side, and set this eye on. Now I want to do the other one in fairly quick order. And I want to do it while the other side is still wet so that if I have to move it around just a little bit, I can. But hopefully I won't need to. Hopefully I can be close enough to call it good. That needs to go back a little bit. 
Again, I don't have a whole lot of time to play with. Now it needs to come up some. And this side can come down just a little bit. And there we have it. Eye number one. Eye number two. Centered. Right where it's supposed to be. And ladies and gentlemen, there is your Picasso Percula Clown. I hope I was able to teach you a couple of things today. I always like hanging out with you guys. It's fun. We get to do different stuff. I was mentioning on a Facebook feed this morning, there's so many different fish out there, both salt and freshwater. Uh, weird, odd looking fish, deep water fish. I mean, there's just so many patterns. I could probably paint a different pattern every single day for the rest of my life and not repeat myself. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Sergeant Mike Robertson, huge shout out to you for this beautiful Western cedar hand carved bait. It is beautiful. It is well sculpted. I am extraordinarily honored to be able to paint it for you. Have a fantastic rest of your day or week or morning, evening, whenever it is when you guys watch this video. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates. I'll see you guys on the next one.